500 JRH. Here we go. Well, that puts a damper on things. Hello everybody, I'm your host Sean. Welcome back to Go Big Bore or Go Home, where recoil is required because we are the house of the rising gun. And as you just saw in <laughs> that intro video and in our thumbnail, we had this 500 JRH BFR blow up its barrel. So what happened? Uh, well, let's talk about something that actually happened a couple of years ago because that's where it all began. I had been uh, shooting this with my brother with my 58 E cylinder, which, <clears throat> there it is. I bought when I got the gun so that I could shoot 50AE out of it because my brother was really eager to see about getting a 58E BFR for himself. So on his third shot, he's got the gun pointed, you know, he's fired two rounds and then this happens. And we were like, uh, that can't be good. So sure enough, we pulled out the cylinder, got a, a bore brush, stuck it down the barrel, bullets lodged in the barrel. What happened? was kind of a squib load, but it wasn't that there was no powder in the cartridge. And this was factory ammunition, by the way. Uh, so the factory ammo, either one of two things happened, and the factory ammo company actually did, a, did some research on this. They were very good, gracious. I gave them the ammo so they could test it. And they even rewarded me with three more boxes of ammunition. So they're really good. I'm not gonna name them here. I just don't wanna drag them into it. I think it was just one bad round out of how many thousands? Anyway. So either they had a bad primer because there was a lot of yellow particulate that was around, or the bullet had, had started to jump its crimp and allowed too much oxygen in uh, around the crimp when the gun went off because there was a big wad of powder, and I'll show that here, uh, that had been lodged behind the bullet. So I tapped the bullet out. I looked down the barrel from, you know, having the cylinder there with like, you know, a bore, well, not a bore scope, but like, you know, with one of those mirror kind of jobs where you can kind of put it here and take a look. Everything seemed to be fine. So there was really no reason to suggest that there was anything wrong. But as you can see from the pictures I'm gonna put up right now, there was definitely a problem. And the question of course is what happened that made the barrel split like this? Well, the reason I bring up the previous issue is because when they took the barrel off at Magnum Research to replace it, what they found is there was a spot in the barrel where there was a crack from that squib load where the the bullet had been allowed, you know, had, had kind of pushed it. I hadn't seen it. There really was no way to see it unless it had a bore scope, which I didn't. I didn't have one of those like, you know, cameras. And it was allowing uh, lead, copper, carbon to kind of fill in. And eventually they, they surmised what happened is it became a bore obstruction so that when you saw the video, and I'll show it again here, What happened was, even though um, I was shooting ammunition, I knew it was safe, was reloads, it was 380 grain uh, hard cast bullets at 1474, which is well, with under, well under the pressure specs. Uh, what happened was the bore obstruction from that crack became too great, too much pressure, and it split the barrel. The folks at Magnum Research were really good about this. They allowed me to buy shipping from them, which was cheaper. And then they replaced the barrel. They also had to replace the ejector rod housing and the ejector rod because they were damaged. However, everything else was fine. The frame was fine. They said there was nothing else to worry about. And they replaced the whole thing for $40 to ship there. And then to repair and replace and send back was $289, which is actually a real deal when you consider they had to replace the whole barrel. So good on them. That's pretty awesome. Uh, now, some of you may have noticed that I have my custom Bisley grip on this gun and not my 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. And I've been requested what happened there. And since that was a little bit of a catastrophic issue, we're gonna talk about that now. So give me a moment, I'm gonna grab that. Okay, if you've been watching the channel for a while or went through some of our older videos, you might have noticed that this gun, uh, my 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum BFR, is something we reviewed a few years ago, and I was sending it off to get a custom grip and a uh, a porting, or shall we say a muzzle brake, put into the barrel by JRH Advanced Gunsmithing. I did end up doing that, but we ended up with a couple issues. One, uh, I ended up finding this grip to be more comfortable on my palm because of the rubber 
The Bisley grip honestly just kicked too hard for my hand, even with a glove. I just found this more comfortable, but it's perfect on the JRH, so I put it there. But as you can see, there's no muzzle brake on the barrel. What happened there? I did have it done. It did make a difference. I was pretty happy with it. And then one day, when I was cleaning the gun after being out at the range, well, I found, came across this. So what you're looking at here is a cracked forcing cone and obviously unsafe to shoot. So I called Jack Huntington, let him know. He said, you know, he remembered that uh, getting the barrel put on, you know, there wasn't any problems. There shouldn't be an issue. So it, it had to have been an alignment from the factory. I spoke to Magnum Research. They're very familiar with Jack and his work. Uh, they were very good about it, but uh, initially they wanted me to charge or they wanted me to pay for a new barrel. And I kind of pushed him on it and, and they put up with me being kind of grumpy about it. Because if it had been some, you know, no-name gunsmith or somebody I wasn't familiar with or someone they weren't familiar with, I would have agreed with them that there was probably an error there. But Jack's very conscientious about his work and hires only the best. So if he didn't work on it himself, the person who did was definitely conscientious putting it back on. They did agree and they were very good about it and they replaced the barrel. After that, Jack asked me if I wanted to put a new one on and I was like, well, no, because it did help. But, you know, I had to pay a couple hundred bucks for the muzzle brake. And if the barrel gets cracked again, then that's money that's just lost. Because obviously they put on a new barrel under warranty, but they didn't put on a new muzzle brake because that was an aftermarket thing. So um, I think that was just a fluke. I've had no issues with this since. It has eaten everything, no problems, no cracks. And there's your update on that. But yeah, so I had a cracked forcing cone on this, and that's why um, it doesn't have the muzzle brake on it and why the grip ended up going on my 500 JRH, which let me pull that up again real quick. Again, to just close out the video, um, we just had an issue with a barrel obstruction due to a crack in the barrel that made the barrel split. Magnum Research was really awesome and they replaced it in I think two, maybe three weeks at most and got it right back to me. Uh, I really do like this Bisley grip a lot. I just, on the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, it was just too much. But for the 500 JRH, it really is perfect. It really feels good. So. Good news, no one was hurt, not even a scratch. To me, that if you have a barrel that it catastrophically fails like you saw in the video and no one's hurt, you know, you just gotta be super happy that everybody's okay. And it really was just the replacement of a barrel, an ejector rod, and ejector rod housing. Anyway, guys, stay safe. Know that Magnum Research will have your back if something goes wrong. And if you do need some repairs, they're very cost effective and very conscientious of the people who buy their guns. They really appreciate us. So uh, thanks to the folks at Magnum Research. And, uh, you know, remember, guys, be safe, go big bore, or go home.